Hello there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. I don't want to cause too much excitement, but today we're going to be talking about dinosaurs, which is very exciting for me. And what's exciting for Keith is we're going to be talking about fossils, because Keith loves fossils. I'm excited. He spends his holidays going around beaches looking for fossils, so that's right, isn't it? it, it yeah, I'm sad. You got a big fossil collection at home? Yeah, yeah, lots. Future episode. In boxes, of course. Future episode, Keith's personal fossil collection. But that's not today. Today we're talking about something even bigger, aren't we? What are we talking about today? We're talking about the first illustration of the first land dinosaur to be discovered by Gideon Mantell. And it's a milestone in the history of science. I just want to lower expectations a bit. We're only going to be seeing its teeth. But That's good. That's good. Teeth? Yep. Teeth ah. good. Let's start with this. This is the Philosophical Transactions, the famous journal of the Royal Society. We talk about it all the time, and we're in 1825. So this is by Gideon Mantell, who becomes a fellow of the Royal Society. He's a local medical man in Sussex, and he is interested in fossils. There's some doubt about whether he or his wife discovered these really important ones. Jury's still out on that one. But in any event, Gideon Mantell looks at these fossilised teeth that they found in the Tilgate Forest in Sussex, and he begins to try and speculate on what they might have once been. Sir, I avail myself of your obliging offer to lay before the Royal Society a notice of the discovery of the teeth and bones of a fossil herbivorous reptile in the hope that, imperfect as are the materials at present collected, they will be found to possess sufficient interest to excite further and more successful investigation that may supply the deficiencies which exist in our knowledge of the osteology of this extraordinary animal. I think he probably could have broken that into three or four sentences. Yeah, I, I think he could have mm. been a bit more pithy, but it's the style of the time. Anyway, he talks about what's going on at the time and how other things have been found to do with perhaps animals that lived in the water. But he's excited because these teeth are different. And he believes they look like the teeth of an iguana and he's found an example of an iguana jawbone but he's mm -hmm. saying here's iguana teeth and I reckon these teeth I've found look just like that. And that's all they had to go on. I mean we're very familiar with dinosaurs these days but if it's something completely new how do you begin to think about what such a creature might have looked like? And Mantell fixes on the iguana as a good model for what this animal might have been. And then we see he goes into lots and lots of detail about the teeth. He's milking these teeth for all the science yep. he can. Yep. Then he talks about the name. He's not quite sure if this is a land or a sea creature, but he mm. thinks it's a land creature. And then he says, in either case, the term iguanodon, derived from the form of the teeth, and which I have adopted at the suggestion of Reverend W. Conibear. Oh yeah, William Conibear. Will not, it is presumed, be deemed objectionable. So he's saying, I'm calling it Iguanodon. Yep. I don't think anyone's going to complain. There's the name. But here's the thing you all want to see. Here's a picture of the teeth. Now you can see the, the fossils at the top of the illustration there, and at the bottom you can see the specimen of the living iguana that he's using as a point of comparison. We've got something extra special here, haven't we, Keith? What have you got yep. over here? Look at well, this. Well, this is the key thing. This is the original. Yes. In colour. So this is the watercolour, which eventually formed that plate in the philosophical transaction. So it's really a big thing. Look at this. This is history in our hands here. That's the first proper glimpse the whole world was getting at these teeth. Now, to finish off, we've got a bit of a treat. And again, this is something from Keith's personal collection. It was hanging in his house this morning, but he's brought it into the Royal Society for objectivity. Keith, what is this? And wh where in your house was it hanging first? Oh, this, this hangs in my living room. In, uh, in your living room? So yeah, you're yeah. watching a bit of bit of TV, you watch the X Factor and then look up at this in between uh, the ads? And maybe not the X Factor, but uh, yeah, pretty much. So this is a uh, print by George Baxter of the Crystal Palace. Now, the Crystal Palace is very famous for the Great Exhibition of 1851, but after the exhibition they moved it to Sydenham Hill in South London. And you can just about see the Crystal Palace yeah. in the background yeah. there. Yeah, the big gorgeous building. But Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins was commissioned to reconstruct dinosaurs and this is really the first Jurassic Park. This is when the public got the idea that dinosaurs were these huge creatures because this was the first three-dimensional reconstruction of life in another era. 
And you can still see them because they are still there. They're still there. They're still there, yeah. They are grade one listed these days, which means they can't be altered or anything. And they're just very, very beautiful things. And very scientific. Richard Owen, who was a great anatomist of the period, helped Hawkins to gather together as much as was known about dinosaurs and other extinct animals at this time. And Iguanodon is there. So if you have a look just at the bottom here, that's an Iguanodon. The one that's kind of partly in the water. That's right. This is a famous print, but the Royal Society hasn't got one, but you have. No, no, uh, well, they might get it eventually. <laughs> okay. But for now, Keith's place at the Museum of Keith. Mm. Love it. Let's have a, a quick flip through and just see what are the beasts we have here. We tend to think of, of fossilised animals as, as dinosaurs these days because, of course, in the mid-Victorian period, dinosaurs were very big. But before that, lots of other creatures were found, so there was a fashion for marine reptiles. And in the 18th century, the fossilised mammals were very big. 